guest was renamed once to all the sad boys we loved before. But I think it is time for another name change. TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, and all the social media platforms have been going wild in the past <laughs> two months <laughs> yeah, over a video game character uh, <laughs> who took the word by storm. Uh, the <laughs> phrase, don't let your significant other play with this game, became very real really fast. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think I've been the cause of and possibly the solution to most of the relationship's problems. <laughs> and there you have it. Yeah. So we, sorry, we are, sorry, no, 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 it's okay. It's, it's, it was fantastic. Um, so tonight we are changing the podcast name and I love this new name that I gave the podcast to all the sassy sad boys we loved before. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we are very happy to welcome our little star, Neil Newborn. Oh, thanks very much. Well, thanks very much for taking the time to ask me to come along. It's been a pleasure. It's it's so nice to have you. Uh, again, I was so happy when we got the message that you're going to come along and, and oh, chat with you. us. So, well, thanks for asking in the first place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've, it, it's been like, okay, let, let's get, let's go, let's go. Like, I discovered you, and it's a very random one, in 2010, and mm -hmm. I was watching Discovery Channel, and okay. I was watching I Shouldn't Be Alive. Oh yeah, with a Steve Callahan story. That was amazing. Yeah. I it, got a real kick out of that. that. Was a that was a really fun job to do. I like, really liked that a lot. Yeah. It's it's honestly like it's easily one of my favorite episodes that they did on. Oh, that. thank like, you. Thanks very much. So good. I I'm like I don't even want to imagine what it feels like to be drifted on sea for like seven to six days. <laughs> yeah, it was it was interesting. So because Steve and I spoke often, actually, we spoke a few times. Um, I had about a month to prepare for the gig. So I went on a, a very stringent weight loss diet um, to be able to do as much as I could safely to drop the weight down to what he would be experiencing. Um, the only thing I couldn't do was atrophy my legs because I've, I've got strong leg muscles and it's the hardest thing to reduce. You lose a lot on your top, funnily enough, but your leg muscles, it take ages to kind of bring this. That's so why I couldn't do it in the time I had. But I dropped quite a lot of weight. I dropped about two stone of weight through training and yoga and and eating healthily but very in a very controlled way um to drop the weight so i could look as i imagined he would do but steve was great because steve was very accessible so he and i would mm -hmm. often have phone calls he was in boston at the time and he and i would have uh, long phone calls and uh, literally just on the phone just chatting about his experience about i'd go through the script with him and he knew about the script and he'd read it and he'd gone through it he also had written a book about his experience which was great yeah. so there's a huge amount of source material and then i got to interview him you know for about three hours at a time just to talk to him about his life about who he was so i could represent him as best as i could as an actor it was brilliant it was a really great experience man yeah oh it's it's honestly like i i always loved that show because it was so unreal to see what people go through and what they survive And of course, what we're showing them is nowhere near as hard as it was. Oh, be. yeah. We're showing them, a, you're showing a slice of drama. You're not actually, this, we way, it was way worse for Steve, you know, I mean, obviously, but the, the stuff he was telling me about it wouldn't be allowed in the show. Because yeah. um, actually, for instance, he wasn't wearing clothes. That was the interesting thing about the, 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 stuff we were doing he was naked the whole time he wasn't in clothes it was and he had these horrible skin sores on his body from the rubber of yeah. just sitting you know he was trying to do as much as he could exercise wise it was kind of impossible really and um, so he had these rubber burns all over his body from and he was naked the whole time so it wasn't like you know we can't show that <laughs> on a daytime tv series thing you yeah. know you can't do that but it's so what we did a very light version of the experience he had And it was very, it was very humbling talking to him because he's also a very humble guy. And um, he's very frank and very open in his book. And also with the interviews that I did with him, um, he was very honest about the person he was before this, this unbelievable, crazy accident that pitched him off into the oceans of the world for two and a half months, you know. Yeah. Um, and then the person he became afterwards because of the experience. So it was very fast. He's, he's a lovely guy. Uh, I had a lot of time for Steve. It was really, I was very grateful to him for being so open with me. Mm, that was great. I, yeah. Yeah. It reminded me because I rewatched it <clears throat> once I discovered mm -hmm. it. And I, oh, yeah, of course. Uh, so I rewatched it. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it reminded me, and I wouldn't be surprised if this would be true that uh, Life of Pi, like, I don't know, just some yeah, of the yeah. sceneries yeah. and everything. I was like, mm, yeah, <laughs> which is also yeah. a great book, but it's it's just a book. It's just, uh, you know, you know, it's not real. Not like Steve's uh, unfortunate events there, but like still, yeah, yeah. it's like, freaking great. Steve is also increasingly ravaged with hunger. I was 
starving all the time and your body starts eating its own muscle. And we can't go anywhere without mentioning Detroit. I think it was a real level upper for me in that yeah. way. Um, I'd done some really big projects beforehand, but always like mocap stuff. And I think just prior to that, I was on Final Fantasy Kingsglaive, mm -hmm. which was really exciting and very cool. And I went from Kingsglaive straight into um, uh, Detroit again, which was very, very amazing experience. Both of them were. And Kingsglaive was definitely a step up as well. And I was very grateful for the support of Audio Motion, who put me up for the gig in the first place. And then for people like Larry Sphinx, who actually took me on to the cast. And uh, Takeshi Nozuru, who I've worked with again since, um, who's an amazing director to work with. And the opportunities people presented me with a lot of faith, because, you know, at the time I'd been doing a lot of mocap, but I wasn't mm. really... I wasn't really a known actor in games outside of motion capture and a little bit of voice work that I've been doing on things like Secret World Legends um, and things like that and Lego games and shit, you know. Yeah. So, um, hey, Lego so, games, some of the best. Yeah, yeah, that's the true. I, did, I, changed it. I think I don't even I don't think the work exists that I did. I did a whole bunch of work for Lego. And I think the game sort of got cancelled. Oh no, was open, was released, did well, and then sort of disappeared. And they did a new version of it. Mm. So I don't think any of my work exists from that game. I'm very curious to hear it. Anyway, um, but it was great. You know, um, Detroit was an amazing experience. Yeah. I was treated super well by Quantic. Um, I met all the animators. Well, I used to go up into the offices quite often and meet them. Mm -hmm. I got to work with Brian, who's just delicious as an actor to work with. He's so generous. I bet he is, yeah. As an actor. <laughs> yeah. And right. I was allowed to improvise a little bit with the text and script and the characters, which was unusual, I think, for the for the projects they'd done before. They hadn't done, a, I don't know if this is true or not, but it felt very much like I was allowed to do stuff that they didn't really do often, which was to really play with the characters. <laughs> and then they, and of course, David gave me two. It wasn't just one, you know, the audition. I was supposed to be only going for Gavin Reed. And then during the audition, he saw something in me, I guess, and offered me Kamsky, which I got scanned for and that was a wonderful experience because I am a character actor so to be able to take your face off in games is something I could never do in film and TV and to be allowed to be a character actor by people taking risks on me and playing multi roles within the project. Um, same thing happened on uh, Planet of the Apes, Last Frontier. We played about, God knows about, I've voiced three different people and played an ape as well and all this kind of stuff. It was just, it's been a really wonderful experience as an actor to be in games because I'm allowed to do things that I really wasn't allowed in many, many casting yeah. people's you know decisions to, uh, to do in film and TV. So it's mm -hmm. been joyous. I love it. Yeah, I'm very yeah. cool. I mean, to be fair, uh, as an actor, I, I think, I would really love to do a video game one day because so far we know that I am excellent at dying in everything. <laughs> That's like my specialty. Every extra job that I ever did is like, okay, so now you die. And I'm like, okay. great. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Maybe you just have one of those faces, darling. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> oh, well, Probably. Okay. Yeah. But it, I'm, it is I'm an expert in dying. That's my forte. I, I give a great death. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, you know, it's a, another profession. <laughs> you know, yeah, you, sure, sure. you have to be an expert in, in dying. So, you know, I'm kind of used to it, but I, it would be really nice to just be like able to talk or something <laughs> before I'm like, <laughs> done for but yeah video games every time we talk, talk with someone we obviously we talk with jeffrey pierce or, or yuli uh, i love jeffrey jeffrey's awesome i got to know him last year a little bit and uh, he's delicious man another great fantastic awesome lovely guy i really like yes. jeffrey enormously and brilliant yeah, actor wow T terrifying and wonderful at the same time yeah, yeah very cool Jeffrey's been very kind to us uh, and coming and, and talking to us on, on multiple occasions. And it's just like always so down for a chat and really like long and deep chat and everything. So we, we love having him. He's a really, he's a really consummate crafts person. Mm. You know, I see his work and I see his, his method. I've chatted to him about his work as well. Not very in depth, but you know, enough to get an understanding of who he is a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And he's great. He's fantastic. He's a really, really talented actor. And it was really nice to go, wow, you know, I admire, I admire your work and your work ethic as well is really good. So, yeah, very cool. Yeah, Jeffrey's a diamond. Yeah, very, he, very cool he, he truly is. He truly is. Mm -hmm. He wrote the uh, three amazing books at this point. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading them because we chatted yeah. about his book as well. So I'm looking forward yeah. to reading them. Yeah, 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 definitely read it. It's it's a, yeah. it's a bit hard to get into. I'm not gonna lie. I was like a bit confused at first, but I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, yeah, very good. After like a, always the first hundred page. You just get through that and it's suddenly like, oh, okay, I got this. <laughs> I can go. And Katie listened to the audiobook, which Jeffrey recorded by himself, I believe. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. Which is like, you know, it's it's like not even Jeffrey talking, I feel like. 
the magic of voice acting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I always realize when we talk to voice actors that uh, actors, sorry, mm -hmm. not, not just <coughs> voice actors. No, it's interesting you say that, actually. I, I agree with that sentiment. I think it's important, especially now in games where there's so much motion capture and performance mm -hmm. capture involved, especially mm -hmm. with our game on Baldur's Gate 3, it was oh, pretty much exclusively performance capture with yeah. voice attack, you know, with the part of that. I think it's really positive to say actor that does voice work, actor that does film or theatre or TV, because all acting is just different techniques and different methodologies that need to be sure. applied technically. But it's all acting. And I think it I is. think it's interesting to see the industry has changed with the gener younger generations becoming more uh, embracing gaming culture as part of their normal narrative of how they ingest culture and story. I think it's important that now we see that art, games are art. Storytelling is the same as TV and film and theatre. Mm -hmm. TV, you know, film started as a way of recording theatre. It wasn't supposed to be what it is now, and it be evolved and became this. Same things happen to games. Games have become an active storytelling medium as opposed to a passive one. It's just a different thing. It doesn't mean it's better or worse. And now we see that people are taking it as seriously as it should be taken, which is a beautiful way of telling a story in a very different way, which molds and is amorphous sometimes with branching narrative and can change to the player. So I think it's cool. And I think it's, yeah, it's good to, I think, for people to let go of voice actor and just say actor. Actor, or cast yeah. or what have you i think it's mm. important yeah yeah 100 i i agree with that um mm -hmm. and uh you know let's let's talk about our, our boy our, our sassy, <laughs> sassy sad <Which> boy <laughs> <laughs> i've been so many different people darling it's hard to keep up <laughs> that's true that's true but yes our little star astarion like uh, yeah, he's cool how how did you find his voice that's what i'm most interested about his voice okay yeah yeah it's based his voice and a lot of his mannerisms are based on uh, three friends of mine oh, so i took a little bit from everybody uh and then added, added a little bit more by myself um so he is the can i swear on this channel i can't remember yeah no please go ahead right, yeah, right. yeah go ahead so he, he's the bastard love child of three of my close friends um okay. one of whom is actually an entertainer which I used a lot of his sort of physicality for some of the more theatrical moments that the theatrical moments that Astarian has, for instance. Um, there's definitely a friend of mine who can cut you with a look. And I definitely use a lot of his habits. The kind of <laughs> no, is that kind of stuff? That's a friend, that's a friend of mine. That's a buddy. I'm gonna keep their themselves, you know. I can talk about one of them because one of them is in the public eye, a guy called okay. uh, Ruben Ruben K who's a one of amazing comedian, beautiful human being. Mm -hmm. And I, I did steal a, a little bit from him because <laughs> he's just so wonderful. When you meet him in life, he's just so amazing to watch. And he's, he's also brilliantly intelligent and yeah. very passionate about a lot of great things. So uh, there's a, a couple of my friends and um, uh, I, I won't name their names because I don't want to get them to get pissed off. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I actually spoken to, I, I guess I, the cat's out of the bag actually. I have spoken, I've, I have said their names before. Yeah, she probably just fuck it, you know. Um, so yeah, <laughs> you one, 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 I'm just wondering if they know. If no, they know you no, no I, don't know if, <laughs> I think I said, well, one of them, actually, and I, I have mentioned them in interviews. I just remembered I have actually mentioned them by name. So uh, one of them is called Landers, who is a wonderful, amazingly talented makeup artist in the Netherlands, one of the best in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, he's won awards and they're amazing. And then the other one is my teacher, who's also my friend, Giles Foreman, who's a brilliant, one of the best teachers, in fact, the, probably the best acting uh, mentor and coach and teacher and everything that I've ever had mm. uh, and I'm lucky to have been uh, to be a student with him still I still work with him if I need to bring a character in uh, deliver us Mars for instance I had t a difficulty unlocking some aspects of the character because it was quite a complicated character so I went into studio with Giles and we spent four and a half hours just straight through working through a whole bunch of different um, method and Laban and, and Yat Malgrim's uh, exercises just to get and uncover the, the character so I still consider myself a student of acting um, but I based it on three, those three um, we started with a high inflection because I knew he was noble so I knew yeah. he was an elf as well so there were certain aspects of of that thing which kind of came into it a little bit but not much just about the physicality and genetics of the character mm -hmm. but then uh discovering the voice and discovering how he was personality wise and doing my own due diligence of you know understanding him intellectually and writing down the facts of his character and working out his backstory and history and all that stuff i started playing around with people that i thought would was in that sort of world was in that kind of type of character 
a little bit you know not the not the immorality i mean the type of yeah. like you know somebody who's very theatrical or somebody who is very intellectual or somebody mm -hmm. who is or whatever and so i just started looking around and then my, my three friends popped into my head as it often happens when i'm trying to work on a character just sort of pops in there um heisenberg for instance is a bastard love child of jimmy stewart uh, um, uh, Cary Grant and uh, um, Nicolas Cage. Don't make eye contact. That's how you spook him. No, that's how you spook a bear. That's right. That is how you spook a bear. I apologize. When you're whining, we're almost there. Oh, yeah. Nicolas Cage just popped <laughs> yeah. in there, man. I just yeah. one day I was like, oh, <laughs> no, I hear that. Oh, yeah, it's definitely uh, there. I'm uh, Jimmy Shaw. No, the, the sort of naturalism. Yeah, yeah Mr. M M Mr. Mr. President, you know, that kind of stuff, right? Yep, yep, Then you yep. have Cary Grant smooth. Oh, you know, the, the, the smoothness of Cary Grant yeah. and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And then you've got Nicholas fucking Cage. And he's like, no, it's, <laughs> he's fucking in there, you know, yep. wild, you know. Ah, my middle army, you know, baller punching asshole. You know, so you just play around with it, right? So, um, a great line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of really fun lines that Heisenberg has and yeah. then I added on top of Heisenberg for instance because he has the power of metal and he's all that kind of shit and he tinkers around he's an engineer and he's covered in oil and crap I added a very metallic edge to his voice um mm. you can you can actually hear it it was kind of a happy accident in um let's see what you really what's see what you really made of that line the yeah. when I hid it in the volume there's no there's no SFX on my voice. There's no processing on my voice. Mm -hmm. I I broke my voice through the line, so it wow. sounds like metal metal gears. If you play it back, there's actually um there's actually a behind the scenes side by side. Let's see what you're really made of, Ethan Winters. Let's see what you're really made of, Ethan Winters. Where you see me do it in the volume, then then it comes onto the actual um, game mm -hmm. itself. There's no processing. That was actually my voice at that moment, which was really oh. interesting. It just sort of came out of an instinct, really. And yeah. so I added in this gravelly, smoky, oily nature to it. So that's one thing. So with the star in, it was like, okay, well, these are my three friends. They've got amazing character facets, I think fascinating habits. So let's find the voice. Okay, there's the voice. Okay, it's, 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 not, it's a high inflected accent because he's posh. Okay, it's sitting there. Let's lighten it up a little bit because he has a lot of flow. So actually, he's quite fluid and he moves around quite a lot. He's quite nimble. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, well, let's add a little bit of intellectualization, darling. And let's put, the, let's leave our nose up. We look down our nose at everybody. So now we have this nasally quality and this sort of bored loosh, but then we have the theatricality, darling, you know? So we start adding all these different bits and pieces and building up um, what it becomes his voice and mannerisms. And um, and it just feels good as well. His laugh is quite unique. His laugh, I, I literally nicked from Tom Holtz, who's a wonderful actor who did Amadeus as a play mm -hmm. in Broadway for years. Um, he worked with a good, a very good, a very old, good friend of mine called Roger Treese, who sadly passed a few years ago who played his dad, um, but Tom Holtz played Amadeus. And in the film, I remember as a kid being fascinated by his choice of laughter. <laughs> Which was almost completely hysterical and manic and yeah. unapologetically loud and piercing. Yep. <laughs> and I just thought, fuck it, I'm, that sounds great for a story. <laughs> so you have this kind of... <laughs> It's so good. Sort of the thing, <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's it's unapologetic, and I just thought, you know what? He doesn't apologize for shit unless he absolutely has to. So, what's a laugh that will pierce through people like a rapier, which is his sort of choice anyway, right? So it'll pierce people in a way that is deeply uncomfortable, um, and make them immediately uncomfortable, and also therefore will depower them and give him all the power without doing anything. And also it's honest. It's like the most honest thing about him is when he's having fun. Yeah. You're not going to That's... eviscerate him, oh, pity. I was <laughs> hoping for a show. <laughs> you know, it's mad. There's a certain sense of madness in there as well. Um, so that was very carefully thought out. That wasn't an accident. I was trying it out, you know, yeah. to see what would work for him. I, I love that on, on TikTok, there are a ton of people just uh, <laughs> uploading the video of just, you know, just, leading Asterion through like uh the underdark between the, the mushrooms and yeah. he just can't stop laughing <laughs> it's the yeah. most hilarious thing ever it's really fun yeah it's also fun to do do you know what i mean it's like it's a real 
it's a real joy for me to do that because it's just it's really liberating to play something that I'm not really although I have picked up his laugh which is weird I, I now giggle like him a little bit if I'm feeling particularly mischievous I did see you, you say that in the um um I I got um I want the tweet from the high rollers um uh, one shot that's airing on Friday, which I'm very excited for. <laughs> that was brilliant. That was that's gonna be it was fucking awesome. It was such a great time. Like I said, we're all we're all so different as actors and people, and yeah. we've all found our place within the main party of companions. I just think it's genius because it's like everybody has their thing of their character. You know, Theo is very different from everybody else in the group. I'm very different from everybody else in the group. Tim's got his amazing, Tim's brilliant, Tim's so hysterical. Jennifer's incredible. Like this mm-hmm. radiant ball of beautifulness. Uh, Devere is so fierce. You know, Sam is so grounded and yet at the same time, still sort of like really powerful at the same mm-hmm. time, really up there and out whilst being very centered. And gr- it's like we all have this very distinct personality as actors. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, we also have these very distinct characters that are super different from each other. I think it's really wonderful to be, a part- and that's just the origins, let alone Dave Jones, who plays Halsin, Tracy, who plays Jahira, or Emma, who plays Minthara. And then of course, the amazingly talented, ridiculously talented, and very lovely human being, Matt Mercer, who plays Minsk. And that's yeah, just the love companion. Matt Mercer. They love Matt Mercer. <laughs> oh, so that's just the companions. That's not yeah. even the other 200, and let me work out the maths, 237 yes. or 38 actors yeah. that are also brilliant and amazing. And every line was well-crafted by the writers and the directors took time with everybody to ensure it was the best version. And they were all working their socks off for four years in the volume. In fact, most of the lines are done in the volume, in a suit with the actor doing the movements as well. There's some cinematic stuff we doubled up. I, I was part of the mocap team as well that were doing doubling. And mm-hmm. I, I, for instance, I doubled Matt Mercer um, for all of his uh, mint stuff um, because he couldn't physically get here, you know, and, um, and Gortash as well. Yeah. And then, um, you know, it was amazing, the sort of level of, of work and trust. It's just beautiful to see so many amazing people on this and, and also see how, how beautiful Larian is as a company, how supportive they are. Yeah. And genuinely, genuinely a positive com- uh, a company, you know. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. really look after people. They really respect people. They pay people really well. They look after mm-hmm. our needs. You they were them. super... Yeah. You no, know, no, honestly, I was I was deeply worried that Larian were not going to be as cool as I'd heard. And I got to work with them. I got to travel with them as a consultant as well. I got to meet the devs. And man, they the company blows me away. They're such a beautiful company to work for. They really care about the project. They put more money back into this game than other, other companies may have done. And they mm-hmm. pushed the game as far as they possibly could to give the best experience to the player. Um, and that is mind blowing to me. Uh, yeah. And it's wonderful as well, because it's great hope and a great, they're a real leading light, I think, as a company, because they show you how you can make one of the best games ever made, certainly the best, I think, probably the best yeah. game of the year. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. No, it's game it of the year. Sure. I'm biased, I'm biased. <laughs> but at the same time, also be a brilliantly positive, supportive company. Yeah. Um, and, and do both. There's a, you can absolutely do both. And not only that, but it makes you more passionate about bringing your absolute best every single time you walk into the volume. For me as an actor or director, you know, I'm the chair, or if you're a developer, what have you, you know, I'm not speaking for mm. them, obviously, but I know that there's so much passion in this game and to see so many people embrace it in the way they have in communities and the press as well. It's, it's absolutely blown me away. I actually, I started crying during one interview. I was just was really like really touched about the amount of, faith people have had in each other and the support that people have had yeah. it's been quite an quite an incredible experience definitely something i i don't even know if i'll ever quite top this experience um mm. in my career i don't know let's see but it was it's gonna be tough to beat i'll tell you that yeah yeah it's a core memory now so you know <laughs> it's a core it's one of those little balls this is like a yeah, little, yeah. Little, it is it is one of the balls, balls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a core memory there you go <laughs> i know cool. my fuck i know my you, you, do. References. you, you know. definitely do so <laughs> but uh you know i i told katie uh because i started playing it first i am still not finished not it e- not even close to finish. I'm at Act Three, but I'm still not finished. It's un- unreal how big this game is. Like, I just don't want to leave anything out, and I'm always like the the kind of person who goes for like the best possible option. So I would like <laughs> okay. to say that in order to please Asterion, I was very evil at the <laughs> beginning. I was like, sacrifice all the tieflings, darling. Yes. Sacrifice them all. <laughs> Otherwise, the time, you know. I was like, Asterion disapproves, and I was like. 
<laughs> why why are you disapproving? Because I was nice? Okay, then I will be because upset. I'm really old. <laughs> I, I know. Because I'm complicated. Yes, right? you, I've, 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 I'm, I've just checked. I'm 82 hours in at this point. Starve yeah. and finish. Christ. Um, and... Um, uh, he's only just. I'm. I think I've just gotten into the third act. Yeah. He's sure. only just started like actively liking me on the little like. Well, scale. You know, oh, I'm like, yes, I mean, this is the. He's, he's not. He's so not. Far. He's not a fair weather friend. Like to be a friend of his is quite. You have to. It's a. It's a. It's a quest in itself. Do you know? What I, mean? I yep, think that's it is <laughs> been so rewarding about it because like yeah. I, I I love everybody else, but everybody else has been very quick to uh, very horny jump my bones. <laughs> They're very judgmental, aren't they, darling? They judge you. They're very judgy. Very judgy. I don't mind. You want to blow something up? Go for it, darling. I'll be there with the, I'll be there with a the match. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah, there's been a couple of moments. Every time he... he um, I got a moment the other day um, mm. where he got very real very suddenly. And I think it was one of the more rewarding things that I've, I've managed to uncover in the game. Because yeah. I think it's really nice and it's been such a testament to the work that you put in. Thank you. Um, to um, get these... Because, yeah, he is so theatrical. So the moment where he really drops that are so impactful and they really make you like endear you to him in a way more um so well it was I, and it's very much by design of course mm, between yeah. obviously starting with the amazing writing with Stephen Rooney an incredible writing team as well that also had input into the dialogue for, for starring um it, it, it's it's a testament to the writing and also I yeah. got to play a lot with it but yeah I mean so much of the choice to be that big and theatrical is it's all a facade it's all deflection it's all the habits of to protect oneself and to cover mm -hmm. oneself and to to deflect away from the vulnerability and the trauma and the truth. Um, so to have those moments where the dialogue allows him to step forward and really, or show a bit more than sometimes he wants to, mm -hmm. is a really wonderful thing to experience as an actor because uh, that's what it's about. It's what life is, isn't it? You don't get to see everything about people all the time. In fact, nobody ever really tells the full truth all the time consistently with total vulnerability and openness right. it just doesn't happen sadly we can't we know human beings aren't like that um so to have a character that can do that yeah and show that after all the oh yes look at this look at this don't look at this because this is incredibly damaged and traumatized look at this instead because i don't want you to see that until mm -hmm. until he does by accident or until he chooses to which is mm -hmm. even more impactful it's it was cool i really loved playing i really i adore playing a star in um yeah. haven't really it let shows. go of him yet <laughs> yeah so i got to play him in every different version of him you know that you that yeah. you can conceive of which is really unusual because usually it's even in a branching narrative the character doesn't hugely swing that much in terms of the choices they make. It's sort of usually funneled to an, an ending of sorts. It, you know, sometimes brush narrative, people live or die, or this happens or that. But it doesn't always allow you to take every possibility of where they can go, uh, which this game really has. And that's one of the, the yeah. beautiful things about this game is you play it your way. You, you make the story that you feel and you can do anything within reason, within the sandbox they've created, you can do anything. You can kill every single person you meet the entire way through the game and still finish the game. There's a really it's interesting um, uh, Polygon video that just came out very recently um, where Pat um, Gill uh, went through and did act one with like a whole bunch of different people uh, and like kind of, it, tr it, it just like tried making like the whole, all these different choices just to see how much how it could stretch. Um, and it made this really excellent point about the fact that yes, it stretches very far, but obviously there's going to be limits. But limits in the way that like come from human innovation, as opposed yeah. to some uh, AI that manages to write dialogue that that comes up from you know, something you might be able to write in, which makes it more of a real thing and, and a breathing piece. Well, they they thought about every possibility. You know, they yeah. they spent money and time. Yeah. Um, don't forget everything they do, everything, every line of dialogue you add in extra to allow somebody to do this, even if it's only one percent of the players, there is a massive price tag to that. Yeah. Um, you know, very beautifully they added to anybody that needed to use all you know all the different pronouns. They added that. They yeah. didn't have to. They chose mm -hmm. to do that uh, at huge expense. You know, um, every actor had to lie. Had three versions of some lines for he, she, and they. Mm -hmm. And that's beautiful to have that in a game where there is a literal price tag to do that. And it's mm -hmm. not, and this is not like text, which could be, you know, some people could do that as a way around or whatever. This is dialogue recorded mm -hmm. by an actor with a director and a writer in a volume in a studio with processing and data costs on top of that. There is a massive price tag to that. 
Um, so they did it anyway because they felt compelled to do so in a very beautiful way. Mm-hmm. And that's just one thing. That's just pronouns, you know, let alone anything else on top of that of different, well, how, what if the player decides to do this? And there should be some lines for some characters, not all of them here. There's one thing for Starion that is a, a very specific set of lines that you only get if you kill him and then resurrect him in a very specific way. And only if you killed him doing a certain thing are you allowed to then do that? And only if you resurrect him using this thing and not that thing, mm-hmm. and then you get, and then you have to ask him various, uh, certain questions. And then there's still five different things that you'll only hear probably two of. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, really yeah. quite something else, this game. It's really extraordinary. I didn't, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that because I was like, oh, that's just so mean. But then... <laughs> Very funny. I, it's a very funny I watched it on TV. It was so funny. I was like, "Ah, oh, might as well <laughs> just talk yeah, yeah. it." So no spoilers, it. but it's a hysterical it's, moment. It's, it's very funny. So yeah. good. Like, come yeah. on. So, um, my games that I, my comfort games are any, any RPG that you can get lost in fantasy. Um, I'm a huge fan of Bethesda. I would love to work with Bethesda. That'd be amazing to work with them. I'm a massive fan of Skyrim, and I love what they did with the Fallout series because I was a very big Fallout One and Two fan. Mm-hmm. So when Fallout 3 came along, I was very curious to see how they'd pull it off. And they did. It was brilliant. New Vegas is one of the all-time greatest, you know, um, first-person RPGs ever. A very, very cool game. Um, and I really like what they did with Fallout 4, actually. I really had a great time in that. I um, haven't really got into uh, Starfield yet, but I'm looking forward to playing it when I ever get free time, which mm-hmm. is probably never going to happen. Yeah. Though. <laughs> so games like that, because the storytelling, especially back in Fallout 1, and Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 as well. I was a massive fan of those games. Mm-hmm. Um, and I played them multiple times, actually. Um, but the storytelling was so interesting because at that point it was all text. There was very little dialogue. There was a little bit of voice acting in Fallout 1. I think it was Fallout 2, actually. Fallout 1, there was a little bit of voice acting too. Mm-hmm. It was pretty sporadic. Um, but it allowed you to really... Uh, the fact that it allowed you to test grey areas of morality. How do you want to play? How do you want to approach something? I really enjoyed that about role play uh, games, you know, CRPGs, um, because it was just interesting, just different way of, okay, well, I want to do this. Will the system allow me to experience the game that I want to play and the story that I want to do? Mm. So that was always my comfort games, really, like playing those kind of, I used to like Fallout Tactics, which wasn't that popular, but was a real, I really enjoyed it. Like stuff like that, like little tactics and role play games together were my definite go-tos. And Total War games, I used to enjoy those things as well. Mm. And um, yeah, I've been a gamer for since I was about eight years old. So, you know, I used to make my own games on Spectrum. Yeah. (laughs) Really laborious for very little reward, quite frankly, but I did it anyway. So there you go. (laughs) That's fair. What about uh, Dragon Age? Dragon Age Origins was very interesting. I like that Mm. game enormously. I haven't really played the second or third game. I played the first one a lot. Primarily because it did two things that I hadn't seen in a role play game before. It made it very cinematic. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially things like the kill moves like the first yeah. one they, which is automatically triggered is when you run up the ogre and sort of stab it yeah. in the air mm-hmm. yeah, i remember yeah. thinking like wow that's amazing <laughs> it's like how it's always been in my head and like the isometric stuff that i used to play yeah um, i like the storytelling as well it was a very gray area that wasn't always clear cut mm-hmm. you know there was your character was a bit spoiled if it was the noble or a bit down as luck if it was something else what have you it was very interesting uh, I like the scope of it as well. I think the characters were really fascinating. And then, of course, Mass Effect came along, and that was just mind-blowing. Um, <laughs> it was the first time I remember thinking... Um, I remember the Garrus moment. It's been out for years. It's not... Yeah, out. please yeah, go yeah, ahead. No, just go okay. ahead. It's, it's been out for like 10, 15 yeah, fucking years. At least, yeah. Um, so at least, if not longer. Um, so uh, Mass Effect 2, there's a moment where you can choose to throw a game of uh, shooting. You're shooting... Yeah, uh, laser yeah. things, right? With yep, Garrus. Yep. And it's completely inconsequential. It doesn't change the story outcome one bit. It doesn't even change your relationship that much mm. between you and Garrus sure. per se. It's just a moment for the player. And mm-hmm. it's really dependent on whether you're not your friends with Garrus or not. And so I really liked the character Garrus. So I thought, we're besties. Like, he's my BFF. Yeah. You know, it's like yep, whatever. Yep. Or whatever. <laughs> and um uh using the youth lexicon correctly there you're welcome uh so <laughs> you know it was uh it was a moment where i thought well i don't want to I'm, I'm a better shot than he is clearly mm. but i don't i'm gonna let him win yeah yeah and it was a weird interesting moment i thought it's very clever because it's you're doing something which is a bonding moment between the player mm. and a fictional character on a very deep level that you actively choose I haven't seen that in a game before. That was a really, I, I literally put down the control, I put down the mouse and the, um, put down the mouse and just stood back and put pause and was like, 
wow, I actually feel connected to this character mm -hmm. in a way that in, in the past, it's been connections to certain characters, but a bit more loose. It's a bit more like, oh, I really like that character because they're useful to me. Mm. Whereas this was a character that was meaningful to me. Yeah. Um, it was really, a really amazing. I remember thinking Such that was the brilliant way of designing the game, brilliant writing as well, and acting. Yeah. You know, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant oh yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I keep seeing that Jennifer Hill uh, as female shepherd is still. Like... I met Jennifer. She's amazing. She's an amazing oh, human being. I really want like. Mm. <laughs> this was literally like three days ago. MCM post said that she's going to be at the Comic Con, and I was like, Oh mm. my god, I'm going to meet Jennifer Hill, and at then London. I literally was no yeah. Birmingham. <laughs> oh, Birmingham, <All> right, <laughs> of course, okay. because I was like, ah, Of course, it's not London. Whatever. <laughs> Next time, maybe keep hoping that I can be with her because she's. She was, I think she was the very first voice, uh, again, actor, uh, that I was like, oh, just everything that she did uh, as a shepherd was just so perfect for me, yeah. just so yeah. on point. She definitely and, had the best, out of the two, I think she yeah. has the best shepherd yeah. voice for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. But also she inspired a lot of actors. I mean, um, Samantha Bayart, who plays Carlac, actually, mm -hmm. uh, she's, you said that in an interview, so I'm fine to say this, that she was inspired by, uh, she, her yeah. Shep was uh, Jennifer Hale's Shep, and she was inspired by Jennifer Hale, amongst other people as well, to get into games, voice acting, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it's great to have those people that inspire you. Mm. I got to know Troy Baker a lot um, over the last few years, and, you know, a great admirer of his work, amazing, amazingly talented actor, ridiculously talented actor disgustingly talented act you know mm. um he's yep. great he's really cool and to see his work uh i was already working in mocap and i'd already been working in tv and film for many years before and theater as well but i remember thinking wow that's what you can do in performance capture okay that's very interesting and mm. i'd already started my journey but i wasn't anywhere near as far along in, as he as he was uh in terms of success in that way i was just doing a lot of you know, background world building and body doubling and all that kind of stuff and really learning the craft of, of motion capture. Mm. So to see him fly and really have this incredibly beautiful, nuanced, uh, highly gifted uh, performance mm. was really thrilling because I was like, yeah, that's what I've known for years. But now to see somebody do it, like, yeah, that's it. That's exactly where performance capture is at. And that's exactly where yeah. it's heading. And it was really, it was, everybody knows this it was a benchmark game a benchmark performance by all of the people involved as mm. well and um yeah amazing man very very cool yeah, yeah. We, we we know him <laughs> we, mm. uh we used to work for him for, mm -hmm. for uh his own thing he did relator and uh -huh. uh, he was the first one who picked us up so mm. you know that's uh we're forever mm. grateful for that because uh that's that's how we kept going we were like mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do this. It's 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 cool, and uh, yes, now we are doing our own thing. But it's still like it, it was him who was like, "Hello," <laughs> and we're like, "Oh, hi, <laughs> nice to meet you." <laughs> but it's great. It's is is honestly like uh, I think his work as Joel uh, in The Last of Us still is just one of the best out yeah, there. For sure. Like, yeah, for sure. Like hundred, mm. and and he's Kai Lang in Master Factory, which is okay. like <laughs> once I discovered it, I was like, "That was Troy." <laughs> What? <laughs> Excuse me. So good. Let's jump back for for water skate a little bit. Yeah, uh, sure. Because uh, I I have to ask this. Do you have a favorite line in that? No, I don't. No, I don't no. have a favorite line. Mm -mm. There's too many. There's too many great ones. That's true. That's true. We, uh, we I did we, thousands of lines. I mean, I actually I don't know what the proper final count is. I have an idea, but it was thousands and thousands and thousands of lines of dialogue. Um, and so many of them are memorable and awesome. Yeah, I don't have a favorite. I had so many amazing experiences and funny and things I could really fly with and things that were really heartfelt and things that were really beautiful to do. Uh, one of the ending scenes of his particular storyline we did in one take was about 20 lines straight through. Nice. Um, and we just did it. We just hit it because I, I, I was asked what my preference was to approach. And I said, can we do the whole thing? And Thomas Mitchell, I believe, was the director of that day. I think it was Thomas. Um, it might be wrong. But anyway, they, it was either that or, or Kirsty or, or Beth or Tilly. I can't remember. I think it was Thomas mm. Mitchell. Though. I'm pretty sure it was Thomas. Um, and Tom uh, asked me, I said, can we just do the whole thing? And we did it. And it was we did it in one take, pretty much. And it was awesome and amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's just like one moment of many different many, moments yeah. and stories and situations in the game i don't have a favorite no there are so many good ones there are. Uh, i don't want to pick a favorite either i just the whole experience was so great that yeah. i don't need to pick a favorite do you know what i mean the whole That's thing was bad. just awesome 
from That's start fair. to finish didn't have yeah. a bad day yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I, my my favorite easily is the i'm going to fucking kill you that's just of course what fun i'm gonna fucking kill you <laughs> that was really funny because i saw that a couple of days before i get the scripts like a few days before yeah and i i, I there's sometimes thousands of line in a script because it's all the stuff we have to record so i just go through everything again and i'd start making some ideas of choices like nothing too concrete but like if i see a particular line like that like i know exactly what i'm going to do with that and then we just try it in a volume usually the first take is the one that i, I hit because i've been kind of having an idea of where yeah. it could go and i've been rehearsing a little bit on that line uh for instance and that was definitely something i was like i know exactly what i'm going to do with that i didn't actually yep. rehearse that line at all i just knew where i was going to take it because it just felt so right and it felt so yep. much fun <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was very excited. I was giddy that day. I came in and went, I think I told, I can't, again, can't, I think it was Beth Park, maybe, uh, the director. But I remember going up to them saying, there's a line in this, I'm going to do something with it, you're going to hate it, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> that was the line, it was brilliant. Before was really I got a chance to play any of the game, that clip was the first thing I saw from it. And I, it, it is, yeah. I haven't gotten that far yet, but it is still one of my favourite things I've heard. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, just, it's a mood, come it's, on. Mate. <laughs> it, it tells you a lot about the character. To them, do you know 100%. what I mean? It's yeah. a real. And I, I like lines that really they don't don't define the character, but they reveal a lot. Like uh, mm. with Nikolai in Resident Evil Three, the first thing you see of him is he comes and shoots somebody in the head, and his mm -hmm. first lines are something like, um, "He was infected. He was infected. He might have been infected." Are all stars this soft? Well, I've under some money if you're dead. Like that, and that's he tells you a lot about the character. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I love doing. I love having those those easy ins to a character. It's like, okay, that's setting up a lot of the character that isn't revealed to the other characters in the scene, but the audience will see it. And that's kind of fun, you know? How do you feel about dad jokes? Because there's- About what, sorry? <laughs> dad, dad jokes. Dad jokes? Yes. How do I feel about them in general? Yeah, yeah in general. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're a thing, they exist, and they're probably <laughs> genetic, I don't know. Okay. Yeah, this is exactly what a dad joke is, right? I hate my job. All I do is crush cans all day. It's so depressing. <laughs> so depressing. Get it? That's yeah. a dad joke. It's awful. It's and so you still go, I hate you more now, dad. <laughs> That's a dad I, joke. I love yeah. them. It, it might be because, you know, I'm 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 not, you know, from the I found a wooden shoe in my toilet. It was clogged. There you go. So, you know, it's <laughs> terrible, terrible jokes. Dad joke. That's what I love them. Joke. I love yes. them. Uh, I have a good one. Say knock <laughs> knock. Knock knock. Who's there? A starion. <laughs> Nice. Well, because you're expecting it's... somebody else, darling. <laughs> Not at all. Right, okay. I don't know why I'm fascinated with them, but I think it was maybe in a movie or in a game where, where they just kept going with dead jokes. And it was okay. like, because in Hungarian, we, we don't really have them. Like, we have something similar in, in like jokes, but. Mm -hmm. Not like this. Like no, you can't okay. play with the words. Not highbrow like dad jokes. No, right. no. <laughs> <laughs> right, these are highbrow. Clearly. Yeah, hundred They really make you think. <laughs> <laughs> love them. I just love them, and I love uh, Katie's face because she's always like, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> "Move the segment along, dad." <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. I'm like, okay, fine. The winding uh, up motion. <laughs> there we go. All right. Freaking love dad jokes. Um. <laughs> all right. Um. I, I, there's a scene in Baldur's Gate uh, b uh, before we, we move anywhere. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I still didn't get that scene, just saying. Okay. I'm, I'm there, very annoyed. Many, you have to be more specific, man, because there's a lot of scenes in Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> it's, it's a scene where Asarion is, is trying, <clears throat> well, I don't know if he's looking at himself in the mirror or trying to, but it's like, you know, obviously. He's trying to see the scar. The, the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And I didn't, I didn't get that. And then, you know, there's this conversation like, your character goes in and you have you have beautiful eyes and whatever and mm. and and there's this scenario in my head that if if it was me and mm. i do i do drawings and and arts and this is like a tiny plug in not like people don't know because they've been here for like 2 years <laughs> but uh we're going to meet at mcm uh this october i'm going to mm -hmm. have a table and uh you know i made a few <laughs> drawings of Asterion like three at least maybe more uh, and I always imagined that you know my character would go up and be like oh you you know you were upset that you couldn't see yourself and mm -hmm. you don't know how you look so right. wow that's really good that's amazing wow that's yeah. really cool so that's, that's very that, good 
Oh, nice oh, plug as well. Very good yes, segue if you. you're plugging your own stuff. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. Um, to. <laughs> yeah, sure. Love that's that. The, isn't that the point of the game? The, the head cannon and stuff is how people want the story to be, and that's why head cannon exists, which I think is really cool and mm. really fun. Uh, I played the I played the story as it was supposed to be, which is all these different iterations of the story. Yeah. And it's really up to people how they see the story beyond that for their own head canon, for instance. It's a very cool thing to do. So I think it's really nice that people have that. Uh, but yeah, your drawings are excellent. Very cool. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. You're gonna, you. You're going to get one of them. <laughs> I oh, can tell you. you. I will definitely appreciate that. Thank yeah, I, I, I will come. Do you want to see <clears throat> the other two or should it be a surprise for October? Surprise me, darling. Surprise right. me. I like surprises. Yeah. Yes. Okay, then it's going to be a surprise. All right. Uh, then the next question is: Do you have any projects line up that are going to come up in the future, or nothing I can tell you about? Mm. Like, Always the way. Always so secret. It's called NDAs, and they're legally yes. binding. You can be sued. So no, <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. I'm telling you a single thing. I'm doing. It's, Sorry. That's good. I have stuff better. coming up in the future. Yes, that is good. the answer to that. Good. Yeah. Okay. That's. That's the best thing to hear. Yeah. Um, and uh, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, mm -hmm. Resident Evil. Yeah, sure. Um, because honestly, if it weren't for the credits, I wouldn't have recognized it. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> which one? Sorry, which which, which one? Through? Oh, Heisenberg. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you. No, uh, not at all. Like, mm, thank you very much. Thank you. So good. I, I, you already talked about what was the process. What was it, yeah, what was it working like on... I was a hoot. It was fun. I didn't have any pressure on me because it was like I was playing one of the antagonists, you know. And so when you play an antagonist, largely you can have more fun than anybody else because it's the hero that has to carry the whole story. You're just having fun in the background and, and yeah. popping into the foreground and popping back out again. So for me, it was great. But also I got to meet and work with Maggie, who's a, who's a beautiful human being and a fantastic, fantastically um, talented and consummate professional actor. Mm. Um, and to meet uh, her on the job was just a real blessing. I was also working with an old time collaborator and also one of my old friends, uh, Stephen Eveley. And so he and I got, it was our fourth or fifth project together, I think it was at that point, okay. um, which was amazing. So Steve and I got to work together. He's an amazing director, one of my all time favorite directors to work with. And he's a super talented guy, very, very talented mm. guy, and can really pick an ensemble that gels well together. One of his many talents is to do that. Um, so, you know, it was just really fun. I got to work with uh, the Rosanna Sun, who's a fantastic producer, uh, mm. with Workhouse, who, who flew me over and treated me very, very well. And I had a great time working with all of them. I got to meet people like Andy Norris, who's incredibly talented, uh, Jesse Pimentel, uh, all kinds of people, loads of people on this, which was great. I got to work yeah. with um, uh, Jeff Shine again, which is great, and Nicole Tompkins as well. Mm -hmm. I, got to, I got to meet and work uh, with Janet Mouse, who, uh, who sadly okay. passed. Yeah. after the mm. uh after the shoot she was an incredibly beautiful human being mm. like really radiant like just really fun and nice mm. and positive and that was really devastating for all of us especially you know some of the cast were very close to her yeah uh, that was a real bittersweet moment so I, I don't even think she saw the success of the game sadly either so you know it was something which i think was the only sort of heavy part of it was that we we lost somebody very dear to us um and certainly it's very close to some of the cast, like as in friends they've known each other for years and stuff. Again, I, I got to work with her, I got to know her through the shoot. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know her that well, but I knew her enough to, to miss her and especially feel feel awful that she wasn't with us anymore. But Aaron Laplante, for instance, was very close to her, one of her closest friends. Yeah. Um, so that game means a lot to, to a lot of people um, mm -hmm. that worked on it for that reason, as well as the fact it was a great shoot. You know, it was an amazing shoot. Yeah. Um, we all met as our characters. Hmm. Um, well, that's not true. Sorry, I met them as their characters because I missed the um, the day before we had a um, a script read and I flew in yeah. that day so I couldn't make the script read because I was literally flying and everybody sat around the table and I wasn't. So when I came into the volume the day afterwards, still a bit jet lagged hmm. and like, Woo, um, I got to see everybody for the first scene, which was, you know, Mother Miranda, like just um, uh, Michelle Lukes, uh, who was playing Mother Miranda, myself, mm -hmm. Jesse, Paula, as well a uh, maggie and also a uh, todd who plays ethan who's amazing he's such a gentleman he's such a lovely guy who can take a hit as well because i tackled him to, i literally smashed him into some um some uh, uh crash mats quite a few times he can definitely nice. take a hit that guy yeah every really nice guy. <laughs> uh, as well as andy you know we had the full cast the full family and becca as well and aaron and everybody was there it was it was interesting because i got to see their characters more than yeah. he said a quick hello but i didn't really know them mm. Um, and it was like, apart from Nicole, 
And then when I got to see them work, I was like, I actually know more about your characters right now than I do with you as a human being. <laughs> Let's talk. Let's, you know. Yeah. And I yeah. Maggie was one of the first people I got to know. Um, yeah. So for me, it was great. I just had a hoot. I had so much fun. I had more fun than I should have done on that on that job. Yeah. yeah. It's, and Heisenberg it's... was very fun. Yeah, <sighs> so like fun. That. Honestly, like I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I haven't played the game, but I watched the entire uh, thing where Jack Septic I play through it. Uh, yeah, because yeah, sure. I'm, yeah. I'm just too scared, <laughs> and I yeah. love horror and everything. But I was you like, shouldn't play seven then. Seven's fucking terrifying, man. Seven's I terrifying. I had to put the I controller know. down. It was like, mm-hmm. I, you know. yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. Wouldn't be yeah. able to get through both of them myself, like playing them. But I had a dear friend who was streaming at the time who played through both of them. She played through seven and then did eight, but it just started before it came out. Um, uh, and I was so glad to do it because we had like so many of my friends who were watching her and we got to experience it together. It's probably one of my favorite um, experiences of that whole thing. I, I love uh, watching that game. I mean, it is so cinematic and, and everybody. Yeah, and also it pays fantastic. homage to a lot of different uh, horror genres, which mm. I think is fascinating. I didn't know that. Because I didn't know anything about the level designs and stuff beyond the yeah. scenes we were doing, so I didn't realize that that she was very well crafted. That each level has its own thematic nature, which mm-hmm. is a nod to some famous horror movie. You know mm-hmm. that there's mm-hmm. a, everyone has a very specific like there's Jaws with um, Moreau's character. This is very much a reference to Jaws, for instance. You have the um, The Shining, which is referenced directly into that. The horrible house with the all the stuff. dull stuff which is yeah uh, oh my god it's like i don't i would never be able to get through that myself mm-hmm. but it is incredible to watch as yeah like, um, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah it's yeah. fucking terrifying i was it shitting is. myself it's horrible yeah. <laughs> And wonderful it's, and great at the same time. Just, I'm terrible with tension and like at, at anything that's like anticipatory, where it feels like where you spend a bunch of time feeling like something's going to happen, but not knowing when it's going to happen. I can't right. do it. <laughs> just, Horror games are not for you, then. Yeah. <laughs> Generally Suspense speaking, is actually got, super important for the whole, well, whole thing to work. The yeah. horror can be so many different things, but like, so the, yeah, suspense uh, for suspense me is it's a like big part of it. But, the yeah, anticipation it, of what's going to happen or not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I think you know? I, I think mm. it's specific specifically like jump scares I get real like I don't I don't know what it is I have to like I mean I will I will watch something and if I feel like something is about to happen and I'm not ready yeah. for it I will instinctively yeah. pause uh and like, <laughs> for, like prepare myself into getting something and then we'll push play on my own time thank you yes yeah yeah I still don't know how I managed to play through Alien Isolation probably because I love I the can't franchise. yeah I haven't, no, I haven't, I haven't played do that one either that. No. I haven't played that game yet. I think it's like um, a friend of mine, Kaziah Burroughs, is in it, as well as Jane Perry, who's a mate. Yeah. I don't know if I could play. And also Anthony Howe is a brilliant actor yeah. as well. I don't think I play that game. I'm, I'm like, I'm good. I don't think I want to play that game. <sighs> it's, it's a lot. Like, I don't know what it is because I love horror movies. That's like my thing and, and yeah. TV shows and whatever. But when it yeah. comes to games... It just becomes too personal, I think. It's like the anticipatory <laughs> aspect of it, because you have yeah. to be the one to push the controller. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly it all becomes like, oh my God, I wouldn't survive in a horror movie, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. no, <laughs> definitely not. So while I was watching that play too, I was like, I, I couldn't do it. I would die at the first minute and I would be like, yeah, that's me done. <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> but like watching it through it was fun i was like okay yeah yeah that's great it's it's just i just can't do it it is what it is it is what i tried <laughs> i really tried all right uh last question mm-hmm. um do you have like any it's such a overused word uh okay. dream dream role i wouldn't call it that but do you have like a kind of role that no not really i, I have i've have, I have companies i'd love to work with um, okay i haven't i would love to work with naughty dog i'd love to work yes. with bethesda yeah i'd love to work with um there's loads of companies i'd love to work with um but there's some of the you know some of the pinnacle of storytelling and of games experience um mm. so definitely naughty dog and, and bethesda i would love to work with those two um but in terms of roles i don't really care i think i do i think i like to i like to have great characters that i can play with and really do my work and my craft and well and and really find interesting stories with them Mm -hmm. um but i don't really care i don't i'm not i'm not like um i don't have a need to i must do that and i must do this Mm -hmm. it's more like give me whatever you think i'm capable of and let me push it even further than you think 
and enjoy it and play around and create a really fun character in a great story with working with an ensemble with great people yeah. um don't really care what the role is in that way um mm. i played everything from tiny little roles to really big roles and then back again you know i, I sort of i work with indie indie companies still i work with double a and triple a companies yep. on games or, or quadruple a apparently is an hour thing um whatever that means <laughs> so um, you it's know something I, yeah it's, it's a thing so i work i don't care I, I work with anybody that has a good story and a good a good fun experience to play with mm. um as long as it's fun and good and not mm. uh there's some there's some genres that i don't i'm not interested in doing mm. not many um i don't mind violence but i think torture porn is something oh, cool. you know the sort of um centipede <laughs> yeah. thing I was oh, human no. centipede. <laughs> something like that i doesn't really grab me i don't mind violence i don't even mind torture in games because it's a real thing in life mm. but when it's so gratuitous that it yeah. becomes like ludicrous um yep. i don't know it's a bit weird i don't mind violence though in, in games it's a part of human existence sadly it's part of our lives yeah. I think it's, it's a part of the human condition but i think there's something that's stretched like like postal no interest in being in something like that do you know what i mean that's i mean they haven't asked me so that's maybe my ego yeah. so i wouldn't do that you know <laughs> they've never asked me because you know fuck it but i think um yeah i think that's maybe my limit but that's pretty that's a pretty wide catch yeah. area of what i will do mm. so, <laughs> Which is so good. you know yeah 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 so oh, um so no but the, the games i've done have been amazing and yeah. i've been very fortunate to be cast in all these incredible games mm. and long may it continue you know i'm here for hopefully a long time i hope and it's been 15 years already and here's to another 30 plus hopefully yeah <laughs> i blow my cards right so yeah yeah, I mean you're br brilliant. Like yeah. just, oh, I thank you. Thanks. Literally, I I told Katie <clears throat> that I literally bought Baldur's Gate because of your performance oh, because that you. was it's the first kind of thing I I heard. I was like, I'm in love with a voice. <laughs> 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 that's it that's done and i was like i need to play this game i didn't know anything about it not gonna lie i was like <laughs> just completely going into buying it i was just like eh, i'm just gonna play it they're like okay yeah let's do it fucking love it never regretted it for awesome. one second it's yeah, it's beautiful you you are so brilliant it's oh thank moment. you very much uh so well, it's, it's fun that i get to the the, the thing on friday is going to be interesting because i got to play him for live now i got to do a live yeah. action version of him yes and um, i'd love to do that i think in terms of films and stuff like that that's something i would love to do yes. i'd love to play a star in as a live mm -hmm. action oh my part, god like, the D, D thing that's come out yeah. i loved i love the new honor among, uh honor amongst thieves that was awesome mm -hmm. that was um cool. i'd love to play a star in something like that that'd be brilliant oh my god. Even imagine, just a cameo. imagine. Just even a and it would cameo, make sense <laughs> it would make sense cameo, man. i'll be in and out i'll be fine <laughs> yes please uh, that'd be great please. Yeah, they keep yeah, yeah. doing that so like why the hell not like you know but like give you like the proper stereo role in dungeons and i have them behind me i fucking love that movie i like that's so great, it's, great movie. It. it's such yeah. a good movie i just so, love the fact they, they asked the, the cast and they were all up for it to play dnd as their characters for real it's brilliant yeah brilliant prep work amazing idea that she did that it's so cool. I, oh god yeah, yeah. Could a hundred percent see you doing that in live action. <laughs> now I want yeah. that. You put it in my head. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. So uh thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, yes. thank you so much. This, this was amazing. Such a good talk. Uh you guys can find Neil uh almost every I think everywhere, like Instagram. <laughs> Twitter. Yeah, I have all my socials in Neil Nibon. Uh Twitch, Twitter, Instagram. I, I have TikTok. I don't use it very much because it's just a step too far, but I, I'm <laughs> on there, I guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's most of my socials. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, I'm just going to put it there. It's going to yeah. be down there somewhere. Yeah, Twitter, Instagram, it. and uh, yeah. TikTok. Yeah. And Twitch as well. Yeah. And Twitch, which, which is so good. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so much fun. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Nia. And uh, we're going to see you in October at MCM. Yeah, I hope, so. I hope so. Yeah, lovely <laughs> to meet you. Looking forward to meeting you. Thank you so thanks much so for much, coming. Katie. Thank you, thank you so much. See you. Thank you. Bye. See you, Bye. Bye. Bye.